Uh, tonight we're also on, uh, we've got a live webinar, so uh, it's going to be recorded for, for, for the guys who couldn't make it. Okay, so I'm Mark Whitman from Vinani. I think a lot of you know me. Um, tonight I'm talking about a, a topic that I'm actually quite passionate about. It's, uh, it's called copy trade or coattail investing or mirror trade you know, or social trading. It's quite a couple of names for it. And it's kind of almost an unknown um, type of trading in South Africa. It's, it, it is starting to get traction. Anybody who trades FX offshore would, might have come across social trading. But it's something that we, I'm quite passionate about. And we've got two dedicated traders on our trading desk, Greg and JD, who are looking particularly at this project and about getting social trading or copy trading uh, off the ground. So what I'm going to go through tonight is the rationale for copy trade, a little, little bit what it's about. What is copy trade? How does it work in South Africa or how does it not work at the moment? Because it, it doesn't really exist, but it, it is coming. And then what are the pitfalls? What to watch out for? And, and really as a retail client, I'd urge you to have a look at copy trade or social trading because this really is a good, useful tool for you as a, as a trader. Now, a lot of the slides I'm going to use tonight are not mine. There, there's such good literature out there about social trading or copy trading uh, from some, some offshore providers that I've, I've, I've liberally helped myself to some of their slides, but, but I've tried to localize them to a degree. Um, just to, at, we'll take questions at the end if you don't mind. And just to remind the guys who are joining us on the webinar, feel free to ask questions. You can just type them in, and we will read those questions out at the end as well. So let's get into a little bit about coattail investing. Okay, so the rationale for copy trade. So this is Cirrus, um, which is very big in uh, a technology provider in uh, Cirrus, in, in offshore in terms of FX. And basically their rationale is the average Joe who's out there, Typically, he does all the social things. He uses Facebook, he uses Twitter, um, he, you know, he, he probably has a LinkedIn account. You know, he does all of those things in a social way. And, and a lot of people are online and being social nowadays. Um, and he does that all day. And he probably does that all night as well. And there's some stats about how often people use social networking, etc. And it's massive. We all know how big it is. I mean, what does what is, what is Facebook have? A billion users. And that seems to work in terms of the social environment but it hasn't really applied very much in, in terms of the trading environment until the last sort of three or four years. So typically there's some stats here and I'm not going to read them. They basically justify how many people are online and how big that community is and how often they're talking to each other. And if you think about trading in South Africa, you hardly ever talk to your colleague, your trader, you know, the market as a whole to gauge what other people are doing, how they, what their strategies are, etc. And so what happened a couple of years ago is there are a couple of providers that, that looked at social, the social networks and that ability for people to interact and share knowledge and said that that would work well for trading. So there's a couple of providers out there who have become very, very large in the space. So there's guys like eToro, um, Currency, and Zulu Trade are the three probably main providers. Um, Zulu Trade, surprisingly, is not a South African company. They're based out of Cyprus. Um, so they looked at social trading and said, this is something that we can apply to the FX, particularly the FX world. So once again, using Surex as uh, slides, if you like Joe and you enjoy being part of community, why not combine your interests? So what happens nowadays is, and I'll show you an example now, social trading is very much about, and, and if you haven't seen this, this is what a social trading screen looks like. So you've got a normal trading screen doing your technicals, putting in your trades, etc. But what they do is they tend to bombard you with the this, this social ideas. So-and-so's trading, why don't you follow them? This person's trading, and it's all sort of different strategies. And we'll unpack a few of those strategies a little bit, a little bit later. But this is what the essence of social trading, is that there are people out there. So it turns out that in terms of behavioral psychology, 1% of the people want to get heard, and 99% of the people don't really want to be heard. They want to be followers. And this is what tends to happen. Yet that 1% tends to be the leaders here. They tend to come up, they tend to show their trades, they talk about their strategies, they're happy to blog, they're happy to write, and they're happy to tell you what they're doing. And some of them are good and some of them are rubbish. And, and that's the art of social trading is to pick who's good and who's bad. So how many of you guys have ever gone in front of a trading screen like this and seen social trading? Because if you have, then you might as well leave now because the rest of the presentation are not going to be interested in it. Okay, so I've got to assume that you haven't kind of seen this sort of stuff before. 
So in terms of, and these are stats, why, why is social trading kind of important? Well, this is eToro's stats, and they're quite recent. They've just gone past 100 million trades. I mean, that's a massive number of trades. Now, eToro, as a social trading business, has only been going about four or five years. So that's a huge number of trades. What tends to happen is 42% of the community are the trade leaders in their environment and 58% are followers. But there's this interesting stat. The guys that generate the trades, the trade leaders or the, or the lead traders or the EAs, there's a couple of different names for them, they tend to be right 63% of the time. But the community that follows them is actually right 83% of the time. And that's kind of an important stat. That means that the community that's watching these trade leaders tends to figure out who the schmucks are and don't follow them, and then tend to follow the good guys. And there's a couple of ways, I think, of figuring out who the schmucks are, and we'll come to that just now. But if you can be 83% of the time right, I mean, that's an incredible stat, because I don't think our trading desk is anywhere near that in terms of our own trading strategies. So if you can be inside a community and you can start following experts and they can give you 83% of the time uh, the correct, correct type of trades, you, you kind of want to be in that space. And these, these are actual audited stats from eToro. Uh, 